हेलो स्टूडेंट आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड इंटीग्रेटेड सर्किट्स एंड देयर क्लासिफिकेशन इन माय प्रीवियस वीडियो टुडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग द फैब्रिकेशन ऑफ मोनोलिथिक आईसीज सम बेसिक स्टेप्स इन द फैब्रिकेशन ऑफ मोनोलिथिक आईसीज आर लिस्टेड हियर दीज आर क्रिस्टल ग्रोथ एपिटेक्सियल ग्रोथ डिफ्यूजन आइसोलेशन डोपिंग देयर आर टू मेथड्स फॉर डोपिंग डिफ्यूजन और आयन इम्प्लांटेशन metallization testing and packaging i will explain each step one by one most common method to grow single crystal silicon wafers is cherlaski method chunks of virgin polycrystalline silicon are placed in quartz crucible along with small quantities of dopant in general dopants like boron phosphorus arsenic and antimony are used depending on dopant the ingot becomes a p type or n type ingot boron will make it p type ingot this is your ingot and phosphorus arsenic and antimony will make n type ingot initially silicon is heated to 1420 degree celsius that is above melting point of silicon once the silicon and dopant combination turns into a melt then a single silicon crystal the seed is placed on the top of the melt just touching the surface the seed crystal and the crucible of molten silicon rotate in opposite direction to achieve doping uniformity once the proper conditions for crystal growth are reached the seed crystal slowly lifts out of the melt growth begins with a rapid pulling of the seed crystal the pull speed is then reduced to allow the diameter of the crystal to increase when the desired diameter is obtained the growth conditions are stabilized to maintain the diameter the seed is then slowly lifted above the melt and then allowed to cool while cooling the atoms in the melted silicon orient themselves to the crystal structure of the seed the ingot is then sliced into wafers these wafers are cleaned using hydrogen peroxide to remove any contamination present it is then lapped and polished this slightly doped p type wafer provides the base or substrate on which active and passive elements are built after the preparation of the wafer or p type substrate the next step is epitaxial growth the substrate is kept in a furnace having temperature 1200 degree celsius and a gas of phosphorus content that is donor material is introduced this is done to grow an n type layer of silicon on the p substrate this can act as a collector for a npn transistor the next step is diffusion isolation in diffusion isolation process the n type epitaxial layer is then isolated into islands so that on each island a transistor or any other component which is desired can be fabricated the two major procedures to achieve this is photolithography and p type diffusion photolithography is a process in which a pattern is transferred from a photo mask on the surface of silicon substrate using uv light photolithography comprises of three greek words photo means light lithos means stone and graphy means writing that is writing on substrate using light there are three major steps in photolithography the first is wafer cleaning and application of photoresist material then mask alignment and exposure to uv light and finally development or photoresist removal so after epitaxial layer growth that is after this step what we will do first we will first form the sio2 layer over the n type epitaxial layer so by oxidizing sio2 layer is formed on the n type layer next step is to form a thin layer of photoresist material thin coating of photoresist material 
on SiO2 layer is formed using spin coating technique. The photoresist is dropped on the surface of SiO2 layer and wafer is spun rapidly to make a uniform layer of photoresist on SiO2 layer. This PR layer is around 0.5 micrometer to 2.5 micrometer thickness. Extra photoresist is removed by a process called edge bead removal. This can be done either chemically or optically. The photoresist coated wafer is then baked to remove extra photoresist. The photoresist material becomes hard when exposed to UV light. A mask is then placed over the photoresist. This is the mask. Mask is a glass plate with a pattern drawn on it. This mask has some transparent portions through which UV light can pass. This is the transparent portion. The UV light which passes through this transparent portion will harden the photoresist material. But from the dark portion, this is the dark portion, the UV light will not pass through it and at those places no hardening will take place. In photolithography process, light from an illuminator is projected through a mask that contains the desired pattern to be created on the substrate. The UV light that passes through the mask is reduced by a factor of 4 by a focusing lens and projected onto photoresist coated wafer. This step exposes one chip on the wafer and the process is repeated for all the chips on the wafer. Photoresist, this is your photoresist material. Here I am talking about positive photoresist material. The photoresist that is not hardened can be washed away using a developer. You can see that the portion which were dark in the mask is not hardened and therefore these portions can be washed away using developer. The SiO2 layer is then removed by an etching process from the areas that are not protected by the photoresist. The photoresist is now removed, photoresist is also removed by scrubbing with heated solvent. The silicon wafer is now placed in a boat and is passed through a furnace having atmosphere of gaseous boron that is acceptor impurity. The P impurities will diffuse down to the depth extending to the P substrate. This will result in islands of N type material on the P type substrate under this SiO2 layer. These islands act as collector for a NPN transistor. The P type channels can be sometimes written as P plus as these have concentration higher than the P type substrate. Now if we want to create base of NPN transistor we have to form this SiO2 layer again. So after the formation of SiO2 layer, the process of applying photoresist, masking, photolithography and selective etching will take place and then P type material is then diffused through a window above the N type islands. These were N type islands and through these windows these P type materials are diffused. This will form the base for an NPN transistor and we can have a resistor in the adjacent island. Actually the base of the transistor will be a smooth rectangular area while for resistor it will be a zigzag area to produce necessary resistance. As I told you earlier that there are two methods of doping the impurities. So before moving further I will explain the difference between the 
diffusion process and ion implantation method. In diffusion method, there is a net transport of molecules from higher concentration region to low concentration region by random molecular motion. But in ion implantation method, the charge dopants or ions are accelerated in an electric field and irradiated onto the wafer surface. The penetration depth is controlled by the voltage needed to accelerate these ions. It is a process which is done at low temperatures while the diffusion method is done at high temperatures. In ion implantation method, the amount of dopant can be controlled. Therefore, ion implantation method has an isotropic dopant profile. But in diffusion process, as the amount of dopant cannot be controlled, diffusion process result in isotropic dopant profile. Diffusion method is less expensive while ion implantation method is expensive as compared to diffusion process because specific equipments are required. Diffusion method does not damage the surface of the target but sometimes the ion implantation method damages the surface of the target. Since we have formed the collector as well as base of the transistor, now we want to make the emitter region. We will again form the SiO2 layer and complete set of processes as I explained you just now are repeated and through a window in the base material, this was your base material. So through a window in base material, now N type material is diffused to make emitter of NPN transistor. Now ohmic contacts and interconnections are made using aluminium metal the process is known as metallization. The aluminum is then selectively etched to make bonding pads and interconnections. After metallization process, each IC, there are large number of ICs which are simultaneously produced in a substrate or silicon wafer. Each IC is now checked electrically for proper performance. The silicon wafer is then separated into individual chips or die. The individual die is small and brittle and therefore has to be properly mounted and pegged. Many masks having various patterns are actually needed for designing an integrated circuit. All the processes are simultaneously done for all the chips on the wafer. These are the reference books used in making this video. Thank you.